What's going on, smart people? Another week, another batch of physics homework assignments. I figured for this video I'd go over what this week's homework sets are actually covering. Uh, I've actually got a lot that is due this week. I've got one homework assignment due on Tuesday, and two of them due on Wednesday, and they're longer homework assignments. I figured I'd start by talking about what the first one is that's due on Tuesday, which is classical mechanics. For classical mechanics, right now we're finishing up rigid body motion, so we're talking about things like Euler angles, the inertia tensor, calculating principal moments of inertia, and that's pretty much what all this homework assignment is on. And I find it really helpful because in undergrad I had a really hard time with rigid body motion, so it's really nice to go more in depth with it in grad school. So just to give, paint a little bit of a picture of what kind of problems there are, I'll read one of them from the Goldstein Classical Mechanics textbook. This is not actually one of the homework problems, but I just wanted to paint a picture of what they're kind of like. So one of them says, when the rigid body is not symmetrical, an analytic solution to Euler's equations for motion for the torque-free motion cannot be given in terms of elementary functions. Show, however, that the conservation of energy and angular momentum can be used to obtain expressions for the body components of omega in terms of elliptic integrals. So I guess things like that, if that helps give you an idea of what kind of questions were being asked. One thing that's definitely a bit different from this class than in undergrad is that I feel like in undergrad there'd be a lot more actual examples of problems that you would solve. Like you would have a hockey puck on a turntable and try to describe the system. Whereas this class just seems much more theoretical and because of that it makes it hard to try to convey what the class I guess is about by reading examples, like questions that might be asked because they kind of sound like purely mathematical questions. So I'm sorry if that doesn't really mean anything to you. But let's go ahead and get to the next one, which is math methods. In math methods, we just finished up our section on complex analysis, which is super useful for physics majors because it gives you access to a method of integration, namely contour integration. And that just allows you to solve a whole family of different integrals that you otherwise would not be able to solve with conventional methods. It's kind of like if someone took away your ability to do integration by parts, there'd be a whole number of integrals that you just wouldn't be able to do anymore. So this gives you access to integrating a bunch of different functions, some of which you still could solve without complex analysis, but it's just another method like the Fresnel integrals. I think uh, Flammable Maths actually has a couple videos on that integral, ironically without complex analysis, which is kind of funny. But needless to say, for this homework assignment, it's a lot of using the theorem of residues, calculate these integrals, or calculate the principal value integral this function. But this is a really helpful homework assignment for me because, as I mentioned before, I never learned contour integration in undergrad, so it's nice to finally have that tool in the toolbox. But moving on to the final homework assignment, which is quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, we're getting into the harmonic oscillator. The harmonic oscillator is arguably one of the more important potentials that you learn how to solve the Schrodinger equation for. One, because it's the first time you'll be introduced to things like raising and lowering operators. And two, a lot of physical phenomena are modeled using the harmonic oscillator, like molecules being bound together as if they were bound by a spring or something like that. Not to mention, it's just one of the few potentials that you can actually solve the Schrodinger equation for analytically. You don't have to turn to a computer. Also, things like quantum field theory, where you have points on the field being modeled with the harmonic oscillator. So it just shows up everywhere. It, it, it deserves its own homework assignment. But for this homework assignment, our professor is just making sure that we're comfortable uh, using the clever way, the elegant way, and the brute force method for this potential. The clever slash elegant way being solving it in terms of the raising and lowering operators, and the brute force way being this power series on sauce and then expanding things and solving it in terms of Hermite polynomials, all that technical stuff. Overall for this week, it seems like I can really benefit from solving all of these physics problems. They seem like really helpful and important exercises. I wish I had more time to do them, but don't we all? Let me know in the comment section what you guys have in store for this weekend. I'll see you there.